This is gonna be another quick mix and match portable PA video. Uh, the last video I did was running the, the Bose Compact that you see here. Unfortunately, it is not produced anymore. You can still get them on eBay used. I'm running, my source is the Roland Handsonic Drum, electronic drum. And I wanna say something before I even start. The Handsonic 10 is not an easy source to run. I, I, I'm not sure why, no one's been able to explain to me, but it doesn't have a lot of output. I don't know how to put it, but um, I plug it into my most powerful speakers and they just, I, I struggle to get the volume. So if anybody can give me an idea how, how to solve it, of course, uh, using a mixer, a preamp in front of it, helps, helps to a certain extent. But I'm talking about just plugging the electronic drum straight into an, a PA. I'm having a lot of trouble getting the game that I'm looking for. Okay, so what's this video about? So I read something online. That's why it's good to be looking at these forums. You learn things all the time. And the little amp on the left is called the Fishman. It's the uh, battery powered Fishman. And I've used it in the past and then I kind of stopped using it. One of the big reasons I stopped using it is it's not pole mountable. It's a acoustic guitar speaker. It's, it's popular for the acoustic guitarists, electronic acoustic guitarists. But for my purposes, um, it kind of didn't meet the needs anymore. It was one of the first battery PAs I bought. And, uh, and again, I plugged in uh, instruments into it. it. It has a certain amount of gain, but it's a small speaker. What can I say? But on the, on the, out, on the back of the speaker, there is an XLR out. So I figured, let me try to boost the gain by plugging in another speaker like a Bose S1 Pro or a Mackie Thumco, some, something to gain a little more volume from that little um, Fishman. And it, I wasn't too happy with it. I ran a, a speaker into it, from it, and just it didn't really um, surprise me at all. And then, so I recently read something online and it said that XLR out is a mic level. So you, have, you can't just plug that into a line level uh, on the back of a speaker. It has to be mic level. So I, I said, mm, let me try this. So I ran an XLR cable from the Fishman mini battery speaker into the mic level of the Bose compact that you see here. And it quite a bit of gain on the compact. Matter of fact, I have to turn it down below 12 noon. Just, it's overpowering the Fishman. So it's, it's definitely a success, this little experiment. And this is an all battery powered system. The compact is not battery operated, but if you look to my right of it, there is my Maya, Grant Maya, 300 watts, and it's running the drum pad that needs power and the compact. So it's running those two units with no issues. It is not running the Fishman because the Fishman is battery operated. Here is the little Grant Ma Maya external battery source, two AC inputs, 300 watts. And what I love about it is five pounds. It's just so easy. It's really, I just want to say to people who are looking at battery, internal battery power speakers, you're paying a lot of money for it. Uh, like the JBL Mark II I have. You can get a more powerful speaker if you just run it off external battery. This battery has run my EV30M with no problem. So it's really quite powerful. It's a really good unit on Amazon. I'll put the link down below if anybody's interested. Here's the speaker we're talking about. It's called the Fishman Loudbox Mini Charge. It does have Bluetooth. It's fairly light. So there uh, is my, my quarter inch going into the instrument channel. That's my drum pad. And then from the rear, there is the XLR out I was talking about. So you wanna make sure that XLR goes to an XLR mic level on another speaker. That's what this is all about. What, what I was talking about before was I ran, I have a cable that's X, female XLR into a quarter inch. 
and I plugged that into, for example, the Bose S1 Pro, and I just didn't get any kind of gain. Nothing like what I'm getting right now. It has to go into the mic level of another speaker. I got the idea for this video, again, from that forum I was reading. And the reason why that person was using the Fishman in front of the Compact is the fact that the Compact doesn't have reverb. It's an older unit and there's no reverb on it. So this person that I was reading about or from was using the Fishman and he liked it because it has your mid control that the Compact doesn't have. It has reverb. So I've, I've added a touch of reverb to the drum pad and so that's my source. The Fishman is the source. And I guess you can use it as a kind of monitor facing you. And the compact, you can turn it up even louder toward the audience. I'm not suggesting people go out and get these, these two speakers. Um, I'm just demonstrating this for people who already have a compact. And many people do. And many people own the Fishman um, Mini too. So... If I was starting from scratch, I would be looking at the Bose Pro 8 for something that is probably as loud as this system. This is two speakers to bring. What's good about it is no speaker stands, but you still have two speakers. On the other hand, you have left and right, which gives it that stereo or quasi stereo. It's not a real stereo image, but anytime I have a speaker from left and right that I could separate 15 feet apart, it gives that uh, illusion of stereo field, which I, I like, that you'll never get from a mono speaker, even though the Bose throws 180 degrees. I still like two speakers. Okay, that wraps it up. Uh, I'm gonna end this video with a short demo. I have a uh, dB meter next to it. Let's see what kind of sound we get with two speakers instead of just the compact by itself. I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe it helped someone who has these, either one of these speakers or maybe both. Okay, next time. Wow, 102.4, not too shabby.